Today we're going to look at intuitionism. Intuitionism is a meta-ethical and normative theory um, which basically says that you can see through your intuitional sense right and wrong. Let's just start with an example. Let's start with an idea. Imagine, for instance, some sort of family home. And in that family home, you find this very happy person. This very happy person is happy because he's got a lot of plates in front of him and a lot of food on that pl those plates. Next to him, however, is a very unhappy person. This unhappy person is unhappy because, you know, unlike this person, they just have a very small bread roll and some water. Now, what do you think of that? You think, oh, that looks pretty wrong to me. That looks pretty bad. Now, what is it that is allowing you to see that? Is it something to do with duties or emotions? No, says intuitionism. Instead, you are perceiving the wrongness. The wrongness is what we call self-evident. So let's start now with the kind of the key idea of intuitionism. Intuitionism says that uh, the good is self-evident. Now, intuitionists are realists in nature. They think that the good really is a fact in the world. So good is a fact. A bit like all other facts, like the fact of a table or the fact of a window or whatever, but it's a slightly different one because it is a value fact. They're also cognitivists because they believe that uh, moral language Oh, that's not an R. Moral language or tru or or um or statements um is truth act. That is, it can be true or false. So this good that is self-evident is stuff that you can see in the world. A bit like if you are kind of by a cliff, for instance, um you can see the cliff and the sky and the tree and so on, but you can also see danger. Danger is a fact in the world that you can perceive. Well, with our example from earlier, you can perceive also, in this case, badness. So, for an intuitionist then, Kind of morality is a fact in the world, and we perceive it so we see it. We perceive it in the world, um, and I think one of the, the, the you know, the, the important points here with intuitionism is that this, this moral goodness or badness is something that exists and is perceived, but it isn't like anything else. It's fundamentally different to all other things. So goodness is different. It is simple. It is non-reducible. It is just the good thing. Um, now, we genuinely perceive it, they think. We see it in the world. Um, and there are different kind of theories around how that would work. The first is G.E. Moore's. So G.E. Moore, remember, is, um, is the person who came up with the naturalistic fallacy, which says that you can't define good. He thinks instead that good is simple. Good is a simple term. It is non-definable. 
So we can't kind of equate it with something else. We can't say, for instance, good is happiness, right? Uh, because then we're saying that good and happiness are the same thing, but we can think of examples where happiness isn't always good. That would be committing the naturalistic fallacy. He says instead that good is just a simple quality in the world. Now, out of this comes his intuitionist theory, although, by the way, Moore didn't really like the term intuitionist, though many commentators like G.J. Warnock or whoever would, would, um, would definitely describe him as an intuitionist. He says that good is this self-evident thing. Um, we perceive it, but because it isn't like the other facts, it's not like the cliff or the table, it's rather like danger or badness, um, we perceive it through other means. And he is annoyingly vague on that fact. Essentially, we intuit it. Our intuition is like another sense. So it's not that our eyes see it or our other sense organs see it. Instead, it is something else altogether. So that's what the good is. But right, he thinks, has a slightly different kind of term. Right is this thing that we work out. So he thinks the right action is kind of the action... that will have the most good, or that will produce the most good. So when you are trying to work out which action to take, you've got to kind of intuit all of the different levels of good and all of the different outcomes of those actions and then, and then decide which one is right. So this thing, this, we establish this through reason. Now, that makes uh, more an, a consequentialist, which basically says that um, the, rightness, the rightness of an action is kind of determined by the consequences or the outcome of the action. So it's not the action itself that matters, but rather the outcome, the result. And for him, the outcome is all about the amount of good that you can produce. So that's G.E. Moore. Another famous intuitionist was W.D. Ross. Now, W.D. Ross has a slightly different understanding uh, of intuition. He thinks that intuition is discovering the morally relevant thing. So essentially what you do is you, you kind of examine a scenario. So you examine a situation. And then you work out what is kind of good or bad in that situation. Again, we experience it. It's, it's kind of through the senses, but a bit like this, that we, we are perceiving the badness, just like we perceive the danger or the beauty or whatever in, in various things. It is a fact that we discover in the world. Just to show you what we mean uh, here, we might look at these two scenarios, right? We might look at, at, at this and at this, and there are a whole load of facts in this. Um, there are, there's food on the table, lots of food here, not very much food here. There's money in the bank here, and there's also a bank robber down there. Those are facts, but they're not the morally relevant ones. Ross says what you do with what he calls intuitive induction is you kind of work out, you compare uh, situations, what we might call thought experiments, and then you work out what is the rule for that collection of situations. So here, it might be that, you know, the, the, the common thing, the rule you establish might be something like 
justice. And justice is one of the rules that, uh, that Ross thinks is particularly relevant. This makes Ross a deontologist. A deontologist says that rightness isn't established by consequences, but is instead established by the action itself. And Ross thinks that we can work out through intuitive uh, induction, so a form of reasoning that is probabilistic, what the rules are, and then you act on those rules. So you act on the rules, having already worked out what is good and bad. But you see with both of these, whether they end up with a deontological theory or a consequentialist theory, that the origin of their um, the origin of their ethical system are these initial intuitions um, about goodness and badness. These discoverings in the world of moral facts that are self-evident. And that is what makes them intuitional.